In order to understand the biochemistry which takes place within our own bodies, the nature and health of aquatic systems in our lakes and oceans, and the chemistry of our air, to name only a few applications, we need to understand the nature of chemical reactions involving the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion. This is acid-base chemistry and can be described as proton transfer reactions. This is as the hydrogen atom has lost one electron and therefore can also be described as a lone proton, thus the characterization as proton transfer. These reactions involve the movement of a hydrogen ion or a proton from one species to another and are extremely important in understanding the natural world. In this video, we will examine the nature of proton transfer and how this describes acid-based behavior. We'll also cover some of the theories defining acids and bases. The Swedish chemist Svante Arrhenius recognized the critical role that the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion played in aquatic systems and described acids and bases relative to the liberation of a hydrogen ion by an acid and a hydroxide ion by a base. Over time, this definition limited the number of substances that could be identified as an acid or base and it became clear that substances that did not fit the Arrhenius description influenced acid-base properties. As a result, Johannes Brunsted and Martin Lowry developed the widely accepted view of acids and bases that can be viewed as proton transfer reactions. The brunsted lowry theory states that acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. Therefore, acids and bases must come in pairs. This proton transfer affects the concentrations of the hydrogen and hydroxide ions, and the acid-base characterization is altered. Let's take a look at a few more examples. We'll start by looking at two common acids, hydrochloric acid and acetic or ethanoic acid. Acid-base chemistry occurs in aqueous environments, so we'll begin by examining how these two acids interact with water. Here, hydrochloric acid is identified as the acid and is donating a proton to water. So in this example, water is considered the proton acceptor or the base. Note that the production of the hydronium ion, H3O+, is indicative of an acid. The hydrogen ion associates to a water molecule creating hydronium. The production of this ion increases the acidity of the system. In this next example, acetic acid, otherwise known as ethanoic acid, is donating a proton to water and is therefore considered the acid, while again, water is accepting the proton and is considered the base. It is important to note here that a brunsted lowry acid must have a base to which it can donate its proton. Next, we will also introduce the idea of brunsted lowry conjugate acid-base pairs. The brunsted lowry acid forms a conjugate base after donating a proton in the reactions mentioned. The brunsted lowry base forms a conjugate acid after accepting the proton. Therefore, in the hydrochloric acid reaction, the first acid-base conjugate pair is HCl and the chloride ion, as the chloride ion remains after the proton has been donated. The second acid-base conjugate pair is the water molecule and the hydronium ion, as the hydronium forms after water accepts a proton. In the ethanoic acid reaction, the first acid-base conjugate pair is ethanoic acid and the ethanoate ion, and the second acid-base conjugate pair is again the water molecule and the hydronium ion. It is very important to observe that the acid-base conjugate pairs differ only by one proton and the charge decreases by one when the proton is donated, while the charge increases by one when the proton is accepted. 
Now let's examine a common Bronsted Lowry base reaction with ammonia and H3. In this case, the ammonia accepts a proton from water and is therefore considered the Bronsted Lowry base, while water is now donating a proton and is considered the Bronsted Lowry acid. If we track the acid base pairings, the first acid base conjugate pair is ammonia and the ammonium ion, and the second acid base conjugate pair is water and the hydroxide ion. Note that using the Bronsted Lowry theory here, ammonia increases the hydroxide concentration, thereby decreasing the acidity of the system or increasing the basicity of the system. As we have seen, Acid-base reactions are typically aqueous and occur in water. We have seen that water can act as a base, a proton acceptor, which increases the concentration of hydronium ions and increases the acidity. But it can also act as an acid, a proton donor, which increases the concentration of hydroxide ions and increases the basicity. Since water can act as an acid and a base, it can also auto-ionize, and this is the basis for understanding the pH scale, which we will discuss in a separate video. Let's consider what happens in a glass of water with many moles of water molecules. Most remain as molecular H2O, but a small number of molecules can ionize according to this equation, with one molecule acting as a Bronsted-Lowry acid and another acting as a Bronsted-Lowry base. This is a reversible reaction, and we can therefore write an expression for the equilibrium constant. In this case, the constant is given the special designation of Kw, the ionization product constant for water. Recall that pure liquids, including water, are removed from the equilibrium expression, so the expression for Kw is shown here, the concentration of hydronium ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions. The value of Kw, the ionization constant for water at 25 degrees Celsius, has a value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Examining the balanced equation we showed earlier, we can see that a transfer of one proton keeps all the stoichiometric coefficients at 1. Therefore, in this equation, the concentration of hydronium ions equals the concentration of hydroxide ions. So, it can be determined that at 25 degrees Celsius, the concentration of hydronium ions equals the concentration of hydroxide ions equals 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per decimeters cubed. Again, this will be relevant in a later video when we discuss pH calculations. From our previous study of equilibrium and rates, we know that as temperature increases, the rate of reaction also increases, and therefore, the value of the equilibrium constant changes. This same concept is true of the auto-ionization of water, and the value of Kw increases with increasing temperature. The table below shows the different values of Kw at temperatures other than 25 degrees Celsius. Since the equilibrium expression for the auto-ionization of water does not change, only the value of Kw changes, the table also shows how the calculated values of the concentration of hydronium ions and concentration of hydroxide ions will also change with changing temperatures. These values are calculating using the Kw value at the given temperature set equal to the Kw expression, also remembering that the concentration of hydroxide ions equals the concentration of hydronium ions in the auto-ionization of water, just like the math shown earlier. So that's it for this video on acid and base theories. In this video, we learned that under the Bronsted-Lowry acid-base theory, Bronsted-Lowry acids, like hydrochloric acid, are proton donors. On the other hand, we learned that Bronsted-Lowry bases, such as ammonia, are proton acceptors. 
we also learned that conjugate acid-base pairs differ by only one proton, for example, ammonia and the ammonium ion. We also learned that since water can act as a Bronsted-Lowry acid or base, it can auto-ionize. The auto-ionization constant for water is 1 times 10 to the minus 14, and this number has implications for pH calculations, which we will cover in a future video.